Welcome back guys, this is Rob with Tech. Today I'm going to show you how to install Ubuntu Server 24.04. We're also going to install Docker and set up a network share so we can have access to our files. Um, also, we're going to install Portainer as a, via a Docker container and we're going to create two networks, Docker networks. Also, we're going to uh, show you how to do ACLs so you can manage permissions on the network share. So first off, I'm using Proxmox, but I mean, this, this would be the same thing if you were to do it on on a uh, bare metal uh, i'm just gonna go ahead and create, create vm i'm gonna do 121 okay that's fine next os i already have the iso if you want to get the iso just google ubuntu server uh and you should find this ubuntu 24 so iso okay see you next now I'm going to set up two disks here. So this would be, we're going to pretend that this is a, a, our home server, right? And we're going to use 30 gigabytes for, as an SSD. And then we're going to add another drive. This would be your spare drive or your external hard drive. So that's what I'm doing here. Just going to click next. Specify my course. That's good uh, enough memory for this example. I will just go ahead and start it. So here I'm going to do English, so we're done. Uh, if you have a, a NVIDIA graphics card, make sure you select the search for third party drivers because you're going to have issues with getting the drivers for that. In this case, since it's a VM, I don't need those third party drivers. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, I'm just going to click done. Here I'm going to set up a static. Uh, this is based on your network. Uh, on my net, my subnet is, you can scroll down, it's going to tell you the syntax, right? So in my network, it's the 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0 slash 24 because my subnet is 255 255 255.0 uh, address i'm going to use 10.0.0.21 this is something available in my network this is going to be the router address and then my dns would be the same for me um if you don't know your dns you can use google like 8.8.8 .8 or you can use 1.1.1 which is cloudflare so i'm going to use that save all right now i don't have a proxy i'm just going to skip that now here's going to test the mirrors this is where it's going to get the repositories and uh the updates so once it says here the mirror location pass you can go ahead and click done now here i'm going to select my 30 gigabyte drive and this would be my ssd now there's this option here for lvm groups if you're a complete beginner on linux i would not recommend using lvm and the only reason is because um the way that they lvm groups they're like uh virtual groups or logic well more than it is like they're virtual groups so it kind of takes up most of the space I, it kind of the os gets its own space the home gets its own space and sometimes well you it's a lot harder to manage the space so in this example i'm going to remove that so i'm just going to create it without the lvm group if you want to know more about every lvm groups uh let me know i'm probably could create another video and show you more on talk in depth with that let's click done now here remember whenever you're doing the installation for ubuntu and you follow this guy this is going to completely erase your ssd or your hard drive wherever you're installing it on so just something to keep in mind if you have important data make sure you back it up so if you click done here it's going to tell you the same thing that i just told you so i'm just going to click continue because this is um, an example so now name this would be your name server name you yt test 24 that's what i named mine and then user i'll just do the same password now here we're just gonna i'm gonna skip ubuntu pro but ubuntu pro basically it allows you to go uh get 10 years of uh security updates i'm just gonna do skip for now now here make sure you select space so you can select this open ssh server this is for so you can ssh to your uh, machine now here you're going to see that docker is available uh, you can select it from here but this would install a snap package of docker that's not my preferred way of doing it so i'm just gonna skip that and install it using the apt so now i'm gonna 
pause the video and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as it, it finishes installing. Right, looks like it finished, so I'm going to go ahead and reboot. Now here's going to give us a message that it failed to, well that's if you're doing it in a VM, it failed to unmount the drive, so, uh, I mean uh, the CD-ROM. So you go here to hard drive, I mean hardware, and uh, CD drive, just do not use media, go back to console. You can click enter and this will just load right in. All right, so our VM already started. So now we're going to get to installing uh, Docker on it. So first of all, we can go into another tab, do Ubuntu. Server 24. And then we specify Docker. You're going to find a guide from Docker themselves. They have a, a, go ahead, a script in here. So you can see the supported versions for 24, 22, 20. Now, in case that you have any old Docker that you want to remove, uh, so you will run this command. But since this is a clean installation, we don't need to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this command right here. Now, of course, like always, every time you're copying commands off the internet, um, it is advised that you check to see what they're doing. So I already tested this one, so I'm going to go ahead and run it like that. Now we're going to SSH into our Ubuntu. Now we do SSH and then do username at. Then you do the IP address of your Ubuntu server. And I'm going to sign in. Now, before you just go ahead and throw the command in here, it's not going to work if you copy and paste it using the Windows command line. Uh, you're going to have errors. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to do sudo su dash this would throw me into the root user uh and so now i'm just gonna right click just to show what happened so it doesn't get the commands don't don't run correctly that's what happened so now i'm gonna go to the next step which is uh actually installing the docker you're gonna notice that we're gonna get some errors they couldn't find the packages so in case that you're you're seeing this is because the top command which is uh, this one right here didn't didn't uh, get executed correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this again, and I'm gonna tell advise you to use Putty. So if you download Putty, you can just do the IP address. I'm gonna do my name. I mean the user at. I'm gonna connect once. Then my password. All right, so we're going to do again sudo su dash. I put the password. Now we're going to right click again. Okay, we're going to get the other command. Not on this one. It's on the putty. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one out. Now you're going to see that it's going to go ahead and see those packages. So I'm just going to click enter. Now, every time that you install a brand new operating system, we should check for updates. So APT. When you're using on not the root user, you're using the regular, so it's just sudo apt update. And then sudo apt upgrade. You know, download those packages. Right, so I'm going to do sudo reboot. Right, so we're just going to right click when you use put it to restart session. And I'm going to have to enter the password. Now, if we do a sudo system CTL status docker, we put our password. You can see the docker is enabled and running. Uh, now we can test it sudo docker run hello dash world. You can see it there in the background. 
this one just basically tests the docker see if it's working correctly so if you look here it says uh this message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly so there we got docker installed now what we're gonna do is you remember that we have another hard drive there so we do df dash h we it's not mounted right so we do ls blk and we can see that we have sdb here this is the this would be our pretend that this is our secondary external hard drive now the next steps that i'm going to do to format this and and add it mounted right this would be depending on on if if your hard drive you're gonna factory format it like for uh format it completely or if you're gonna like erase it then you can follow the steps if you already have data on there and this is a, is a supported linux file system like in what's a e ext4 or xfs zf zfs in any of, of any of those supported file systems then you can just mount it so in this case in this uh it's just a blank disk so i'm just gonna reformat it so i'm gonna do sudo f disk and we're gonna call our device sdb now we're gonna do n for new partition then primary so p for primary and then i'm just gonna do one enter so the default will be one that's, that's i'll do that as the first sector enter again now we need to put a label on there so we click t you can see the partition type so you can do capital l and that will give you all of them we just have to select 83 so it was already linux so we just uh, make sure that it's on set of that and then when you do w it's going to go ahead and format it and set the partitions so right so you do that now we need to make the file system so m sudo mk fs that i'm going to do xt4 and then you're going to do the device name dev sdb1 this is a new partition all right now what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and mount the drive so sudo vim or before we do that we need to check the device um you id so dev disk by you id you can see here the one our uid for the one that we're using this sdb1 is the uid so then we're going to do again sudo vim and then etc fs tab this is to mount the hard drive so i'm just going to go ahead and do i for enter and then here we're just going to do port slash dev disk by uid and then i'm just going to right click that's going to paste my uid for that disk that we have then here i'm going to call it for slash data and then xt4 because that's the file system that we use then default and then zero two this is for file system checking so just gonna tell it to check the first one first and then this is the second the parameters for this one is only zero one and two so zero means it's not gonna check it so i'm gonna do two so i'm gonna do escape and then i'm gonna do colon wq another thing that we need to do we need to create that mount so if we check right back on that we said that we're gonna mount it here on data so if we go back yeah sudo and then you're gonna do make directory so mkdir forward slash data now we can do sudo mount dash av this would mount that drive to that slash data now you can see here it says data successfully mounted so now you can do df dash h you can see that the sdb1 which is our new partition is here mounted so next time that you restart it would automatically get mounted because we added it to the fs tab which is here now another thing that we need to do is if we check we do an ll and then we do forward slash and i'm just gonna grep uh for data so we only see that one you can see that the owner is root so what we can do here is we can change the ownership of this data. So 
I'm just doing a pseudo C own. I'm gonna call it Robert. Robert. No, I forgot the recursive. So here, C own, then dash capital R space, and then you do Robert. Robert. The the first one. This is your username, and this is your gonna be their group. So usually the their username has has a group named the same. So that's what I'm gonna do on mine. And then you're gonna do for slash data like that i'm just going to enter now if we do the same command again you're going to see that now that data drive is robert robert so now we can do a cd we can do four slash data we can make a directory without doing sudo we're going to test our axis and we're going to make um, a data folder now we're going to cd into that data folder and we're going to do vim test.txt and then we're gonna do I and then test message. This is just to test our axis. Escape colon right quit. Now you're gonna see if you do an LL that you have a test file there and it's under your username. Uh, so that's how we set up uh, the external hard drive and set up the permissions. This will be the end of part one. Subscribe and like to see part two. In part two, we're gonna go ahead and install Portainer as a container and create two Docker networks.